Welcome to Electro Online. On the previous video, we showed you how to find the equivalent spring constant of two springs connected one after the other. Then if we apply a force to it, we'll elongate both springs, so the elongation for the first spring would be considered x1, and elongation of the second spring would be considered x2, if we think this to be equal to x1. So we have the equivalent spring constant, which can be written as 1 over k equivalent is equal to 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2, or we can write that the equivalent spring constant is the product over the sum of the individual spring constants. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to show that the potential energy gained by elongating the two springs can be expressed in terms of the equivalent spring constant, and we should show that 1 half k equivalent times x1 plus x2 quantity squared, which is the total elongation of both springs, is equal to the potential energy gained by the first spring plus the potential energy gained by the second spring. Can we show that those two are equivalent? That's our job. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, we can see that every term has a half in it, so the halves can cancel out. And then we can take the k equivalent and move it to the other side so we can now write that x1 plus x2 to the second power equals 1 over k equivalent times k1 x1 squared plus k2 x2 squared. Now notice up there on the right side I said this is part one because I think I'm going to need at least two videos to go through the whole process, so it's kind of a lengthy process. So let's take it one step at a time. Well, the next thing we should do is write what this is equal to in terms of that. So we can now write that x1 plus x2 quantity squared is equal to the quantity 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2 multiplied times k1 x1 squared plus k2 x2 squared. There we go. Like that. So next what we're going to do is we're going to multiply all this out and then multiply 1 over k1 times everything in here plus 1 over k2 times everything in here. So basically the distributive property. So on the left side we end up with x1 squared plus 2 x1 x2 plus x2 squared is equal to 1 over k1 times this, the k's cancel out, so we have x1 squared plus 1 over k1 times this gives us plus k2 over k1 times x2 squared plus 1 over k2 times this gives us k1 over k2 times x1 squared and 1 over k2 times this, the k2's cancel out, so we get plus x2 squared. All right. Now notice on the left side we have an x1 squared, on the right side we have an x1 squared. Here we have an x2 squared, there we have an x2 squared. So again, we can cancel a few things. We'll cancel this with this, and this with this. And now let's rewrite what we have. So now we can say that we have 2x1, x2 is equal to k2 over k1, x2 squared plus k1 over k2 times x1 squared. And then to make things a little bit simpler, let's replace a few things. Let k1 over k2 equals to a, and let k2 over k1 equals to b. Just to make it a little bit cleaner to work with, so let's rewrite this. So we have 2x1, x2, is equal to, uh, here we have, that would be b x2 squared plus a x1 squared. And then if we take a look at that, that looks an awful lot like a quadratic equation of sorts. Yes. So let's put everything over to one side, put it equal to zero on the other side. So we have zero is equal to a x1 squared minus 2x2 times x1, and then plus b times x2 squared. So notice I have a quadratic equation 
in terms of x1. We have x1 squared, we have x1 to the first power, and x1 to the zero power. So we have a quadratic equation that we can solve. So we can then say that x1 is equal to minus b, that would be plus 2x2, all right? So this is minus b, so minus b, that would be minus times minus times this, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that would be 4x2 squared minus 4 times a, which is a, times c, which is b x2 squared, all divided by 2a. All right, so we have a 4x squared, 4x sub 2 squared, and we have a 4x sub 2 squared that can be, that can be taken out of the radical sign, so let me, hmm, maybe I should come over here. So that means x1 is equal to 2x2 plus or minus. So when we pull out a 2x2 out of there, so we have 2x2 times the square root of, this would be 1, and that would be minus. We have a 4x2 squared taken out, so we're left with a minus a times b. Minus a times b, all divided by 2a. Now, 8 times b, let's take a look over here. 8 times b is equal to a is k1 over k2, and then we'll multiply times b, oop, too many parentheses here, b, which is k2 over k1, which is equal to 1. So 8 times b is equal to 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, so 0 times this is zero, so that means that x1 is equal to 2x2 divided by 2a. Now the twos cancel, and a is equal to k1 over k2. So we have x1 is equal to x2 divided by a, which is k1 over k2, k1 over k2. And then if we bring to the numerator, we can say that x1 is equal to k2 over k1, times x2. Or, if I want to solve for x2, I can say that x2 is equal to k1 over k2 times x1. So now what we've done is that we found two equations that will equate x1 to x2 or x2 to x1 in terms of k1 and k2. So that's a really good start. What are we trying to do? We're trying to show that the potential energy stored in the equivalent spring, the two springs together, equals the sum of the potential energy stored in the two springs individually. And then we found that x1 can be related to x2 via the spring constants of the two springs based upon this. So now we're going to do a second video for part two to finish it so we can show that that is indeed the case. So stay tuned and we'll show you where to go next.